And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. A game that I really enjoy is Exodus Proxima Centauri. I have it way over here on my shelf. It's from NSKN Games. It's a 4X spaceship game, and one of the things I like about it is the technology tree. In fact, I love technology in any game. You give me an opportunity to build my technology, I'm pumped about that. Well, here we have another game from NSKN Games called Progress, the Evolution of Technology. And this is essentially a technology game. It's like a 1X game, just the building a tech tree. And you're going to be doing it. You're going to be taking different cards. You have a convoluted chart, which you actually don't need to play the game, but you can look at to see how all the technologies work together. If you've ever played civilizations like I have, you've looked at these charts for a very long time. I'm going to build this, so I'm going to need this, 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 and this. Something I like. Let's hope the game is good. Here we go. Progress takes place over multiple eras. We start in age one, we'll go to age two, then age three, and if you want to play a longer game, you even have age four cards. Each of these cards are going to show multiple technologies. Those technologies are actually even shown here on this sheet, and if you flip it over, you can see the ones all the way up to level four, and it shows how all the technologies fit into each other prerequisite-wise. There's a center board where players are going to keep track of their prestige, their population, and their warfare. And then each player has their own unique board. And these down here are going to keep track of a couple things. First of all, you can see here that this tells you how many cards you can have in your hand. So you start with uh, five cards in your hand, and you can have a maximum of five cards at the end of your turn. This is the draw action. On your turn, you're going to get several different actions that you can take. The number of actions you get is right here. Uh, so you start with two actions, although that can go all the way up to five actions. Um, then one of the actions can be draw. So I can draw three cards. I can get that all the way up to draw six cards. However, the draw action, when you take that, that ends your turn, essentially. So once you take that, you have no more options. However, you can do a quick draw. This lets you draw one and discard zero. Or you can get to draw two, discard one, three, discard. So this can go up to draw five, discard one, which can be done in the middle of your turn. This lets you shuffle one of the discard piles into a draw pile and then get that many cards off the top. This is another one that you can do in the middle of your turn. This shows how many technologies you can be working on at any given time. And this shows how many cubes you put on those technologies. What that means is players have different technologies in their hand. So let's take a look here at an example of a technology. This is mining. Now there are two ways to get mining in the play. You can just simply place it in front of you as an action. And I'm allowed to have one technology that I'm working on. And then I put four cubes on that card. Developmental cubes. So I use the black cubes for that. At the beginning of each turn, I take one of those cubes off. When I take the last cube off, I put that card into play in front of me. And I'll get whatever benefits that that card gives me. In this instance, it gives me the opportunity to move up my actions. I will now have three actions. Sometimes these cards, when you put them into play, will let you move. This one lets me move one on the prestige track. And it also gives me this token. And I'll explain what those tokens do in a second. Other cards will give you victory points. And some cards, uh, when enough of these cards are in play, this brings a level two token into play. And depending on how many players are in a game, you can now bring out the age two technologies and start using them. Another way to put these technologies into play is a lot faster. And that's simply by just paying to put them in play. To put crop rotation in play, for example, I need six science um, resources. Um, if I have calendar in play, I can ignore three of those. And if I have irrigation in play, I can ignore the other three. And if I happen to have both in play, so let's say I already had irrigation and calendar in play in front of me, then playing this card here, crop rotation, would be free. And again, you can look at the chart to see which cards are prerequisites for other cards. You can also how do you pay the resources? Let's say I want to put out calendar here. I need to pay four resources. Well, in the corner of each card is how many general resources that's worth. So I could discard four points worth of other resources to play calendar. Or I could turn over these 
tokens that I've gained from different technologies. Each turn, you, these are refreshed, so this would give me one that I could use to put calendar. I would just need three more. Sometimes these tokens you get are specific to a certain type, like science or technology or culture and those can only be used on the particular ones. Uh, like for example here, musical instruments is a culture. It needs one only to put in place. So a culture would work for that while science and technology would not. But general knowledge here or from cards in your hand will always go into play. So as the game progresses, players are going to be moving their cubes on these and getting better actions. You know, bigger hand size, being able to do better quick draw, get more actions each turn, have more technologies they can be working on, put fewer cubes on this technology so they come into play faster. But you'll also notice that there are victory points here. So if you get your track up to certain spots, you'll be worth victory, they'll be worth more victory points. So if I have this track here, I get one victory point for getting up there and another victory point for there. The game ends when you go into your last age from, if you're, if you're ending at age three, when you play the last age four, uh, thing that brings out the last age four card, then you end the game. Or if you're in age four, something that brings in age five. Once that happens, then the points are totaled up. You're going to take points on any cards. So any cards that give points, like for example here, this uh, crop rotation gives you points. Uh, let's look at some of the cards from Future Age. Here's Modern Arts that gives you a point. Uh, the Telegraph here gives you a point. You'll also notice that some of these do all kinds of things. This one moves into the Fourth Age, is worth a point, gives you one on Warfare, and it also can be spent to be four over the course of the game. Sometimes they move you two on a certain track. That moves you two on the uh, track. Let's take a closer look so we can look at these here. And some of them are worth more than one victory point, like fertilizer is worth two victory points for whatever reason that that is, or uh, biology is also worth two victory points. And there's all different cards, so you'll add up the victory points in any cards and technologies you have in front of you, and then you'll add up points for these. Whoever has the most on each of these tracks is going to get points. So whoever is the farthest on the on the prestige track gets 10, farthest on the population gets 11, farthest on warfare gets 12, and second place gets points, and so on and so forth. You add those points together and whoever has the most is the winner. There's also a couple small expansions in the game. There are philosophers that each player can start with. Uh, not only do they tell you turn order, uh, but they also give you a special ability to start the game. Basically, you start one of your tracks higher than everybody else. And then you also have the opportunity, as time goes by, to upgrade these philosophers into scientists and then into artists in the different ages who can be flipped over and leave a legacy or a heritage, I'm sorry, that can, you can be used to build something else. Also, there are things that you can all work on together, like global... Uh, circumnavigation, where if you pay these different costs here, anyone who pays one of those costs puts a cube on it, and at the end of, once it's completed, whoever finishes the card gets the points, but everyone who's on the card gets to move up on that particular track. There is also a solitaire variant, and like I said, there's the age four cards, which, you know, really go far into the modern, we got television, and refining, and the automobile, and the atomic theory, and mass media, etc. Most points, winner of the game. Okay, I like this game, Progress, Evolution of Technology, but there are some negatives to it, or at least some negatives for some people. First of all, the game is essentially multiplayer solitaire. What you do doesn't affect the other players one bit, other than there's only so many cards in a deck, depending on how many players there are, you put like a if there's three players, you put a certain number of cards in the deck. So if I build a technology, there's a chance that you won't have the ability to build that technology. And we're also fighting on the different tracks to be the highest in prestige. But other than that, not really much involvement there. The only tiny bit of involvement is if you use the, um, uh, the one expansion, which the, uh, what are those called now? The, the, um, the progress things, the milestones they're called, where you, everyone can work on the same thing together. But honestly, both the little expansions here are eh. I can take them or leave them. They don't need to be in the game. Now, that doesn't bother me that much, but be warned. And so, because of that, a five-player game of this is entirely too long. It just is. In fact, four is pushing it. This game plays best two or three players, and I would imagine the solitaire experience is pretty interesting, too. 
and that's a lot better. I like how all the different actions work together. When first play of this, I thought, oh, you want to get your action track up as high as you can. That's what you need to do. Well, not necessarily, because the cards that give you actions don't give you much else. They don't give you points, and they're often not the prerequisites for other things. So you can sit there and set build stuff, simply prerequisites, and say, okay, this is what I want to build so that I can build the better stuff later on. But this game is a bit tactical, a bit, a lot tactical, in a sense that you really don't know what your opening hand is going to be, and you really kind of work with that hand. I mean, you could say, well, I'm going to draw a card so I get what I want. Yeah, but you're going to give your opponent a lot of technologies out there. And it is possible for you to have an opening hand and go, oh, wow, boom, boom. I put out these two technologies. They're the prerequisite for this and the prerequisite for this. I'm already ahead of the other players. That is possible. So I'd recommend doing some sort of variant maybe where you can mulligan your hand or you draft your initial opening hand, something like that, so it gives players a chance to be more of an even footing there. I don't think everyone's going to be super excited about this game. It's a technology game, but the technologies don't really mean anything. They don't do anything. They, they move you up on this, on this track, and I love this. This is great. This is like flux done right. You know, I draw extra cards and do this. This is great. But some people are going to say, well, I built a television. It didn't seem to do anything. I discovered refrigeration, and I don't, and I, what does that even mean? Well, it just means you might get a special action or you might be uh, in refrigeration. You are, you get some extra population. Isn't that exciting? So I think the opinions in us are going to be mixed. They certainly weren't the groups that I played. I liked it. I think it's very interesting, but I think I find it best with two or three players. Play quickly. And even though I think age four is neat, it's best to say in just the initial three ages, the game runs perfectly there and seeing how the different cards lead you each time. A very fascinating game to say the least though, that's progress. Judgment, Dice Tower approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door. Boop. Boop.